we never thought that we would get hundreds of millions of people using AI a couple of years ago. Now suddenly we have more than 500 million people using AI almost on a weekly basis. At the same time, we need to understand that on, on one side it's becoming easier, but on the other side the gap is, is increasing because you still have people, you have, still have even 150 years after we had electricity here in New York City, we have 800 million people that do not have access to electricity, and that's the first block. The second block is, well, from those people that, like, you still need to actually, if you have electricity, you still actually need to have access to computers, and then for those people that actually have access to computers, you need to have access to uh, uh, connectivity, like access to the internet. Once you go through the whole funnel, you also need an AI model that speaks your language, correct? And, and that's something that, there are certain languages like English, Spanish, Mandarin, like, and a few more where you have enough content to have trained these models. Uh, but once you go, like there are languages, like if you speak Guarani in South America, well, you, you don't have access to a large language model today. Um, once you revisit the whole uh, funnel, you have over half, likely ha around half of the world that do not have access to this technology. And I think that it's important for us to recognize whenever we're thinking about AI and potential AI, we cannot forget that we still have that problem, that, that debt, basically, that we need to pay.